Hello, my name is Cole Hornaday and welcome back to The Panel Jumper. As the United States streaked through the 1970s, the air was thick with the harsh, jagged anxiety of a culture adrift, struggling to find its identity following the senseless violence of the Vietnam War. Decadence and promiscuity were commonplace, cocaine was the recreational drug of choice, and heroes were hard to come by beyond a daredevil with a death wish. Making his debut in 1966, Robert Craig Evil Knievel crowned himself the king of the daredevils. The master of the motorcycle, throughout his career Knievel attempted 75 ramp-to-ramp -ramp jumps, failed in an attempt to rocket across the Snake River Canyon, and set the Guinness World Record for most bones broken in a lifetime at 433. Knievel was a rock star stuntman and the idol of millions. No suburban child's toy box was without an evil Knievel action figure and crank-driven motorcycle. But Knievel was not without challengers to his throne. Enter the human fly. The human fly's origin story begins in the most unlikely of places, a Canadian sausage factory. Roma Foods was a family-owned business run by Joe and Dominic Ramassieri. Business was good, trade was brisk, but brother Joe was bored. He looked at the crowds drawn to Knievel and formed a plan. They would jump into the daredevil biz for themselves. So in 1976, the brothers Ramassieri took a scratch from all that salami and formed Human Fly Spectacular's LTD. Now all they needed was an actual daredevil. <laughs> Cue the arrival of a mystery man named Rick Rojat. Rojat King complete with a tragic backstory. In 1969, he suffered a terrible car accident, losing his wife and child. He claimed to have endured over 38 operations, after which over 60% of his body was replaced with reinforced steel parts. Exactly which parts were left to speculation. No one knew his face. He only appeared in public clad from head to toe in a luchador-style mask and a costume of fuzzy red felt, trimmed in white stripes and speckled with sequins. Of Evil Knievel, the fly once said, He started daredevilism, but I'm finishing it. The human fly's world premiere stunt found him strapped upright to the back of a DC-8, traveling at nearly 300 miles an hour. The stunt went awry. After 20 minutes aloft, pelted by 300 mile an hour raindrops, the semi-conscious fly returned to Earth and spent the next four weeks in the hospital, recovering from severe windburn and bruises. In 1977, Marvel Comics took note of the fly's antics and added the human fly comic book to their lineup, dubbing him the wildest superhero ever because he's real. The comic book guest starred many Marvel House of Ideas notables like Spider-Man, Daredevil, Ghost Rider, and the original White Tiger, and featured a supporting cast styled in the integrated formula of the day. Blaze Kendall, a female African-American pilot, Arnie Berman, a Nebishi business agent, and stunt engineer Ted Locke, a Vietnam vet who lost his hands in combat and bore a striking resemblance to another obscure 1970s folk hero, the enigmatic, real-life private investigator, J.J. Arms. Together, the human fly and his comic book compatriots crisscrossed the countryside in their fly van, doing stunts, righting wrongs, and donating their earnings to children's hospitals, a trait the print character and his real-life counterpart purportedly shared. In late 1977, during an undersold Gloria Gaynor concert pre-show, the human fly attempted to smash Knievel's record leap over 13 school buses by breaching a whopping 27 using a rocket-assisted Harley-Davidson XL1000. Unfortunately, physics weren't thoroughly considered during this stunt, and the fly ended up crashing his motorcycle into the superstructure of the landing ramp. He miraculously survived with only a broken ankle and multiple contusions. Upon his discharge from the hospital, the fly disappeared and was never heard from again. <laughs> Decades later, Joe Ramasseri revealed there was not one, but several stuntmen who donned the fuzzy red sequin jumpsuit. Foreshadowing? Hidden truth? Easter egg? Mere coincidence. As it turns out, the man calling himself Rick Rojat was a bit of a con artist and never a real Hollywood stuntman. Years later, an alternate version of the accident that rendered him a man of steel surfaced. He claimed he'd been a zookeeper in a primate house where he was mauled by an enraged menstruating gorilla. <laughs> Gorillas trump car crashes every time. Recent efforts to locate the man known as Rick Rojat have hit a blind alley. Looking back, the tale of the real human fly becomes very meta. With multiple stuntmen performing the fly's varied stunts, the persona was theoretically undefeatable and expendable. When asked by a TV reporter in 1977 what would happen if the fly were to actually die in one of his death-defying stunts, Joe Ramasseri responded, Personally, uh, financially, I don't think it would do, uh, do us harm. <laughs> uh.
<laughs> Marvel's The Human Fly comic book was canceled in 1978 after only 19 issues. But as we've learned, you cannot truly swat the fly. And plans are afoot to resurrect the character in 2016. Help me! Help me! We'll see you next time on the panel, Jeff. Thank <laughs> you.